before we go for any further, we're going to take this strut right off here in a minute. But uh, one of the things you can do if you're a little anal maybe and don't think you have to go through an alignment process is take and mark this camber, camber plate back here with a little weight marker. You know, that'll help, help you get the thing close. Okay. Uh, one of the things we do notice on taking this apart, this uh, car had been into the, uh, one of the Corvette shops in the Chicagoland area, and the owner had some work done on it, and I don't know who did it or why. Uh, it's something dangerous we wouldn't do, but somebody, for some reason, had actually cut this strut rod and welded it back together and put it back on the car, on the car, off the car, we don't know, but this strut rod will actually be replaced before it leaves our shop. Next thing we're going to take, take this uh, shock mount off, and take this uh, cutter pin out. That came off. Uh, sometimes these shock mounts are hard to get off. What we have is a little spindle locker here to get it started. We screw that on the end of the threads. Of course, we sell this tool in our store, but uh, that helps us get that shock mount out without uh, damaging the threads when you go to hit on it. It's, it's already started. The shock mount has been out at one time. Recently it looks like, so it's, it's coming out pretty easy. And you notice we did support this so it doesn't uh, fall haphazardly when we're after we're taking this out. To knock that out the rest of the way. Yeah, somebody's been in there. I mean, this is simple. A lot of times you have to use heat or even a torch to heat this up and use the spindle knocker to get it out. I have, uh, we have gotten a lot of trailing arms in here where these are absolutely rusted tight and the customer is actually just taken and sawing the strut rod off just to get it off the car. That's how rusty sometimes these, these, these puppies can be. Okay, next we're going to take and just spray this uh, strut right out with the crowbar here. Okay, next thing we're going to do is take off these uh, four screws from the half shaft that attach to the trailing arm and take these French locks off. Have to palm back the tabs to get at them. A good trick, uh, these are tight against the flange here a lot, so uh, a good trick is to use like a spark plug socket that's got a thin wall. Uh, or you just got to use that, uh, run that out. This, this is the last screw. And the half shaft is free. Okay. Okay, you can see how bad this this arm is, the way it can wheel out the, the fat front bushing on this trailing arm is completely gone. The next thing we're gonna do is take out this uh, long cotter pin. Let's get behind here and pull it. Pull these pieces down so you can get them back out the hole. These hold the uh, shims in. Get squeezed together. And okay, now we'll go around the other side and pull it out. Watch your hands get a hold of the cutter pin here, the long one. These shims are slotted in there, so that's what keeps them falling out. We got the big 
went out. Next we're going to take out the uh, smaller cotter pin. Here we can get at it. And it's out. Okay. Make sure you use a 11 16th wrench. Take this nut off. Turn it off all the way. So I've got three hands here now. I got one on the wrench, one on the light, and one on the camera. Do you believe that? Uh, the redhead holding it says no. Okay. Now, what you notice, notice here we've taken, uh, protected this dog leg in the car so it doesn't get scratched. Uh, we've got a piece of rubber just uh, clamped down there. We may have to get in here with a, a bar and hit that uh, screw to knock it out. Uh, we don't know what condition we've got to deal with some on that, uh, but we've got to protect the car. Uh, we don't like to pay for paint jobs, uh, but we'll go ahead and do that now. You see this bar here I've got, I'm going to try and drive that uh, bolt out. Ow! And it's, it's started to come out. So that's uh, probably one out of ten are that easy. Uh, most of these Midwest cars are, are rusted and you actually have to get in here uh, with a sawzall or, uh, and saw right through the shims and the bolt on both sides. It probably takes a 20 minutes to cut to do that, then then you take take the uh, uh, arm out. Oh, we can reach in here. And this is pretty tight in there. I'll have to get that another driver and get that bolt out a little bit. We're gonna take and push. Oh, it's it's so loose, which is very unusual. We can just just about push it push it out. I gotta just use a three eighths bolt here to help push it out and. I can't reach it with my fingers. I have to get a screwdriver. And we'll get on it behind, behind here and push that bolt out from the inside here. This is probably one of the hardest sides to do because the gas line is there also. There it is. Okay, now we're we hard time getting the shims out, so we get here the crowbar and get in there on the inside of the shims there. Work them out. There. Got one set. I oh, we're gonna stop right here. We're gonna take some uh, tape. Tape this on. Uh, mark it like this. Uh, right inside right hand inside I'm going to set those shims aside and then we're going to get in here and see if we can work out the other side yeah if they, they're fairly loose they're coming come right out actually there's only one there's only one shim so we're going to mark that right hand outside You notice, uh, I didn't even talk about it before, but uh, we've got what I like to use is a fixture we made up for putting the trailing arm in and taking it out. Uh, it's supported here in the back with a screw, and I've got a saddle up here in front, and it's clamped to my uh, transmission jack. Uh, you don't have to do that, uh, just be safe. Uh, a lot of guys just put a hydraulic jack underneath here to support it. Uh, make sure it doesn't flop around to you. You might want to take and strap it to your hydraulic jack because it is free now. It should just walk straight out of the car.
Okay, and it is out. Uh, if you're doing this by yourself, you're going to probably spend three or four hours per side taking them out. And the big thing is the shims that go up in front. And we'll show that when I reach in here and get this bolt out. This is the trailing arm that we've taken out. This is the bolt that went in it. You can see how these uh, front uh, bushings are gone. You know, the car was wobbling on the back of these. He couldn't track straight, etc. That was the re that's the reason. Uh, this is the bolt that was going in it. There's this, uh, this is inside shims. And we got the other shims over there. But what I want to show you is uh, the way it would be in the car. If you cannot, if this is all rusted up, you can't get it out. Like, like I'm saying, you have to take a saw right through those shims and through the bolt on both sides to get this thing to come out. Then you get in there and get the shims out. It's best, you know, try to, try to, if the bolt doesn't come out sometimes, first take and try and work the shims out. Then it might be able to get the bolt out. It all depends. Every car is a little bit different. So, but that's what you may end up having, having to do. Uh, the fixture we've got here, uh, it's what, like to use uh, it saves somebody working by themselves a lot uh, an extra set of hands if you're doing this make sure you've got it well supported with a hydraulic jack stand etc so it won't fall on you uh, these by themselves weigh 46 pounds and uh, you don't want to get or I should say about uh, 40 pounds you don't want to get cut by this flange or anything like that so that's it uh, we'll come back later and uh, after we get this Trailing arm rebuilt, and uh, uh, we'll show you how to put it back together. So that's it. Thank you.